right, we're headed down to San Diego right now. We're gonna look at a 1965 Choi Lee sailboat. I think that's how you pronounce it, Choi Lee. But uh, today we're looking at possibly buying the boat. Hold up. I feel I need to explain how my search began for a new boat. After I sold Giraffe in Florida and moved to California, I started looking at your typical modern fiberglass sloops, but I'd already had that with Giraffe, so I wanted something different. I guess I started to feel like one of those guys who wants a classic car. It's not really practical, but it's a hobby, a passion, spending hours in the garage polishing chrome, or in my case, the potential for sanding and varnishing wood. And in my search, my mind kept going back to years ago when I watched a film called The Talented Mr. Ripley. The film is pretty good, but what stood out most to me in the movie was a beautiful sailboat, and I loved it. So much so that I did research about the boat. It's a 1957 Philip Rhodes designed yacht built by the Clark Shipyard in England. The boat is called Santander of White, built on the island of White. Check out this photo from the boat owner's Instagram page. Stunning. So this boat was in my mind as I was searching. And as I said, I saw several boats with your typical fiberglass tops until I saw a boat in Los Angeles. The make was a Choi Lee. I'd never even heard of the brand before, but I was intrigued. Now, Choi Lee is not the same exact boat as in the talented Mr. Ripley, but similar. In fact, the same Philip Rhodes designed many of the Choi Lee models. It's the same classic style and design that I liked from the film. So this is cell phone footage from the first Choi Lee I looked at. She was a 1963 model with a wooden hull, which already scared me. Well-maintained topside, but completely gutted in the cabin. I loved the looks of the boat, but it needed a lot of work. So I passed on it. But this got me very excited about the Choi Lee brand. So I searched and I found a second Choi Lee in San Diego. This one with a fiberglass hull, but still plenty of classic woodworking on top. Yes, I'm a glutton for punishment. That's kind of a summary of what has brought me to this point. Let's get back in the car so we can see the boat. So today we're going to go, we're going to look at the boat. I'm going to dive down under the boat, look at the hull. I want to be very thorough with this. I have a GoPro camera that I'm going to uh, try to show you some of that footage. Examining the rudder, the keel, the prop, um, the prop shaft, and things like that, which I'll explain as we go through it. So for now though, we're heading down and we're almost getting to downtown San Diego. Beautiful Stephanie is also on, on the ride. Just look at her drive. Beautiful. She is a beautiful driver. So we were just talking about how we really like the style of the Choi Lee boat. We've been looking for a while for a new boat to upgrade and um, the Choi Lee is so different and the decking and um, it just has so much style. It's very, it's a classic, but with that, the boats we've been looking at are 1963, 1965, so uh, a lot needs to be done to them. Uh, the one we're looking at today that we've already looked at, that we're doing the survey on and the sea trial is beautiful down below, but up top needs a lot of work. The owner has let all the decking go and we feel that or I feel that Josh can redo it all and we can save some money. Yeah, so that's the plan. Um, we saw this boat last weekend and the main thing that was the problem was really the decking, the teak decking. Uh, it needs to be the re, uh, re-cocked, if you will. The lines that go through the, you, you, you'll see. Um, it's not a it's cocky, cocky. Okay, so other than that, at least from last week, the boat looked really solid. Um, engine was in good condition. It was the Perkins engine. Uh, I'm very familiar with that from my uh, previous boat, the Beneteau 38. So yeah, we'll be uh, just doing the uh, walk around, little sea trial. There's a broker that's working with us. Uh, well, he's actually the listing agent, if you will, um, who's selling the boat. And so he's gonna take us out for a sea trial. We're gonna be able to test out Obviously, the engine, the steering, the sails, um, the rigging, uh, make sure everything is in working order. Um, and the goal is to go into the purchase uh, well educated and do the due diligence you need to so you don't uh, buy something that then, you know, two weeks later sinks on you. Uh, obviously, there's some common sense that also goes into it. And actually, the person owning it 
now is living on it and there's everything is functional because of that, because the person's living on it. The uh, electronics all work, the sink, the water, um, the head, everything works. So that's a good sign right there. But yeah, I mean, you gotta do your due diligence, you gotta do a inspection and you need to go into it armed with uh, preparation. So I prepared by actually making my own list, which is a, a pretty significant document Four, uh, well, I got four or five pages of what to look for, and I um, used the prior survey that was done on my uh, Beneteau 38 that I did have the professional surveyor, and I used that as kind of a guide, right, of what they looked for. And you'll see, you know, um, with any of these surveys, you can probably find stuff online. But there's just the standard stuff you have to look for. Um, and that's what we're gonna do to make sure we're going into this purchase uh, smartly, if you will. So we're here with George at the, what is it called here? Bayas. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Bayas. I'm George from Bayas here in San Diego. And um, we're going for the sea drive. It's gonna be his next boat today. So <laughs> you're gonna enjoy it. You will see us later. And here's the boat. We go through my checklist and check everything we can think of on the boat. I didn't get a lot of video of this, but let's just start here at the front. Um, so we've got a roller, roller furling system here. In a bit, we'll be able to look and see how that functions once we actually get the sail out. Let's also look at the uh, stanchions here and see how they're connected to the deck and if there's any um, loose stanchions. Mm -hmm. Making my way around the deck and checking the standing rigging. Okay, one second. Yeah. You should. You do the gas. This is the shifted, yeah. so be sure to turn it out. And this is just like a car starting. Huh? Here are the engine gauges. George is explaining to me what's what. Checking to see that there's a good flow of water coming out of the exhaust area, which indicates the engine cooling system is working and the engine water pump is doing its job. Oh wow, it's got a uh, wooden boom, huh? That's pretty cool. It's got a wooden uh, boom, which is unique. Visual. That's interesting. That's pretty cool. This one's we're gonna take off. Now I'm checking the condition of the lines and the running rigging, and I'm continuing my checklist. It's interesting. We get underway and I'm going to check where the prop shaft goes into the hull and then into the engine. There's a bit of rust and corrosion at the stuffing box area, which is common, but you want to make sure the corrosion is not extreme. We then get the sails up. They can use a good cleaning, but I'm still fascinated by this beautiful wooden boom.
George is showing me the reefing points on the mainsail. Now we're just enjoying a brief sail. The boat is doing well in light winds. After the sea trial, we head back to the dock where I jump into the water and check out the hull. Here's the prop, and this here is called the zinc, also known as a sacrificial anode. Its purpose is to counteract galvanic corrosion. The zinc is in good shape, which is important. I also try to wiggle the prop to check for any play in the cutlass bearing. There is no play, it appears to be in good condition. Next I check the rudder stock and pintles, making sure everything is solid with no play, no loose parts, and nothing is rubbing. That's really all the footage I have from that day. Needless to say, we bought the boat. The next footage is from a week or so later. I rented a dock space in San Diego for a month to do some initial work before moving the boat to my mooring in Newport Beach. Now I want to give you a better tour of the boat. She's certainly unique compared to all these other boats at the marina. So here she is. Let me give you a quick tour of the exterior. By the way, the boat's named Lokahai. It's a Hawaiian word for unity. So here's all the woodwork. As you can see, I'm going to I'm going to be peeling all this off. Here you can get a visual. And here you can see where I've already started doing the varnish removal using a heat gun and a scraper, which I'll go through a whole, uh, whole episode of how to do that. You can see here. This is the old varnish, and this is the, uh, the scraping. So we got that. I've also done quite a bit already of this uh, of this railing. So that's where the uh, that's where I stopped it. This is cool here. These are belaying pins in a pin rail. Very old school for organizing your lines and halyards. Going back to the stern, even the blocks for the main sheet are wooden. These blocks will also need to be stripped and revarnished. All right, let's check out below deck. Here we have the main salon. It's nice. Uh, curtains there. This toaster oven I'll likely get rid of. Once I put on the mooring ball, I'll have no use for that. A lot of storage. A lot of storage here. I've already got some items in there. Storage. storage on that side as well. Let's go up to the forward V-berth. Real nice V-berth. Got all my gear here and whatnot right now. It's a brand new memory foam mattress with other uh, brand, these are brand new. And this is a real nice uh, mattress. Here's looking back the other direction. I've got a lot of junk in the galley. Storage space is here. I've got all my cleaning supplies, all kinds of stuff right now. But you can see that the, oh, this is cool. Joey Lee. So 
So that's cool. We got our got some other good books. Saltwater fish. Here's the head. I've been cleaning in here quite a bit. A little piece there. Storage. Here is the galley. Get a full working refrigerator down here. Okay. A lot of storage, typical. Typical storage. We've got our electronics panel here. Got a sink with the uh, sink here. Uh, this is more storage, just has some cleaning supplies and whatnot in there. More storage here. Now I've already done a thorough cleaning of this entire boat, uh, except for the engine, which is my next goal, but I'll show you briefly. The engine, it's a Perkins, the same that I had on the giraffe, except this is a Perkins uh, 4107. So you get a nice uh, alternator, you got a bunch of the uh, wires in there. <clears throat> you got different access points. Get the water pump. It's got some got some corrosion on the water pump that I'll be scrubbing and cleaning. I've got a whole episode coming up of engine engine maintenance. I've got a guy that's going to come help me, and I'm going to do a, a thorough cleaning of the engine. But uh, I've run the engine several times. Uh, no major oil leaks. It makes me happy. Unlike giraffe with some major oil leaking. Check this out in the cockpit. You've got a manhole cover with full access to the back of the engine. All right, that does it for this video. Thank you for watching. A lot of work ahead, but I'm really excited about this next chapter. I've had some people ask me or comment whether I was done with sailing altogether when I sold Giraffe. Some people even unsubscribed. Have faith, my friends. I am not done with sailing. You think this farmer from the show-me state of Missouri is going to give up that easily? No. Okay? I recently heard someone say, you're the author of your own life story. You can start a new chapter anytime you choose. So think about that for a minute, and we'll see you next time. Dope lens. I got a new wide angle lens.